Good evening. It is my honor to be here. Let me first thank and recognize my great colleague, Javier Bracera. He's going to be an amazing Attorney General for the state of California. So let's give him a big round of applause. And I'm so pleased you asked me to give some remarks tonight. Before I do that, I do want to recognize your co-founder and your president, uh, Salam al Murayati, for his amazing 28 years of dedication to serving the community. <clears throat> so. I'd like to call Salam up. I have here a certificate of congressional recognition, and it reads, in recognition and celebration of your 28 years of dedication to serving the Muslim community in America, and with sincere appreciation for your work upholding core American values and preserving constitutionally protected freedoms for all Americans. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Let's get a picture here. So I'm going to talk about two issues. Uh, the first is the discrimination that you and I have faced and will likely continue to face, and then how we can fight against that. This is not the first time I spoke at Impact. Four years ago, I had uh, the honor of speaking here, and I was deeply humbled when you recognized me for my work in being the first elected official to stand up and challenge their home improvement company Lowe's and other companies when they withdrew their advertisements from the TV show All American Muslim. I believe it was based on a, a bigoted and fearful response and we stood up and worked with other organizations and challenged uh, that company. And uh, we, what we see now is echoes of that starting to happen. And one reason I reacted so strongly to that incident is because it reminded me of discrimination I encountered. Uh, different ethnic groups in America encounter different kinds of discrimination. There is a form of discrimination that is somewhat unique to one that affects Asian Americans and American Muslims. And it goes like this. When some Americans look at you and I, their first thought is that we're not American, that we are not loyal to this country, that somehow we're suspicious, that we're second-class citizens. And that has had a series of profoundly negative effects uh, in our country's history. Uh, within the Asian American community, you had the whole yellow peril hysteria earlier in our country's founding, followed by the Chinese Exclusion Act. Then you had the alien land laws that prevented any Asian American from holding land, followed by the internment of over 100,000 Americans who happened to be of Japanese American descent. And then you had the uh, killing of Vincent Chen, uh, the solitary confinement of Wen Ho Lee. And last year, you had five separate cases where defendants were alleged to have committed espionage, only to have all those charges dropped a few months later. And the only thing that was the same among all those five separate cases, the defendants looked like me. They were all Asian American. And then was then the Muslim American community, you have gone through an entire presidential campaign where there were racist and bigoted attacks against this community. You had to hear the president-elect talk about banning Muslims you have had people close to him talk about a Muslim registry, and you have had a lot of very negative stereotypes being put out there. And what I want you to know is that I will be a voice in Congress for you. I will fight for you. I will fight for you. I will defend you. I will stand with you. Because if they come after you, they are coming after me. We are all in this same boat together in this amazing country called America. We rise and fall as a nation and not as individual subgroups. And our framers uh, were pretty smart. And here is why I think we have hope. They put in a pretty good system of checks and balances. They created an entire Congress as a check on presidential power. They created an entire judiciary as a check on governmental power. And this is uh, going to lead to uh, my next subject, which is things that you can do. Uh, you can do what I did. You can give more money to IMPAC. Uh, I gave more money earlier this year. I gave money to IMPAC earlier this year because I was so offended about some of the rhetoric I was seeing uh, in the presidential campaign. Uh, I also became a donor to the ACLU, 
and a donor to the Southern Poverty Law Center who go in. <clears throat> they go in every day and fight for your constitutional rights. Uh, you can also uh, work on different public rallies. You can go to uh, join the Million Women March on January 21st. You can run for office. <clears throat> Uh, you can also uh, take part in community events. Uh, you can be uh, what you're doing right now. You can be a good and active participant in the community and uh, think also about writing letters to the editor and op-eds. Uh, it does turn out that the Washington Post and New York Times, they do get a lot of letters to the editor. It also turns out many of them are written by the same people. So if you start doing it, uh, then eventually your voices will be heard as well. And at the end of the day, uh, if we stand together, if we fight together, we're going to show the voters of America uh, that there's a right way to do this and a wrong way to do this. And in two years, the voters will be able to vote again and make a judgment. And in four years, they will do that again as well. Yeah.